4-7, congruence in overlapping triangles. All right, so the objectives here are number one, to identify congruent overlapping triangles, and number two, to prove two triangles congruent using other congruent triangles. So our focus question for this lesson is going to be, how do you identify congruence in overlapping triangles? All right. So, overlapping triangles may have a common side or angle. You can simplify your work with overlapping triangles by separating and redrawing the triangles. Okay, that's important. You can separate them and redraw them, and it will help you determine common sides or angles. All right, like here's an example. Number one, here we have two triangles that overlap each other. Okay, it says what common angle does triangle ACD and triangle ECB share? All right, so first thing you do is you'd want to separate them into triangle ACD and ECB. And then it's clear to see that the common angle in both triangles is C. All right, it's clear to see that but that they have C as a common angle, right? If you can tell by looking at them without separating them, go right ahead. But I would recommend separating them, especially when you have, like here we just have the two triangles that overlap. I mean, it forms these little ones, but it's still relatively simple. When you have the more complicated figures, then I would highly suggest separating them and redrawing them. All right. So, real quick, first got it or or the first you try using this picture. Number one a. What is the common side in triangle ABD and triangle CAD? And then letter B. What is the common side in triangle ABD and BAC? So take a few minutes or for a few moments and answer both of these questions. All right, the common side for ABD and DCA, all right, when you separate these, you're going to have this triangle here. All right, and then you have DCA. So you have this triangle here. Now, I didn't separate them, but I traced over them. All right. And you can see the only, the common side is the side that I traced over twice. All right. So the side that I traced over twice was side AD. So therefore, AD is my common side. Okay. AD is my common side because when I traced over it, that was the side that I traced over both times. Now, what is the common side? I'm going to use two different colors for this one. For ABD, so here we go, we have the red triangle. And I'm going to make this one green. Uh, BAC. Alright, so that I trace over the same side with both colors. Well, yes I did. I traced over B. A with both colors, so therefore BA is the common side in triangle ABD and triangle BAC. Alright, moving on. Identify common parts. So here we have two triangles that overlap each other, forming four triangles when they overlap. We need, well, I want, we need to identify common parts. So what parts do these two triangles have in common? Okay. So what I did is I separated the two triangles and drew them separately. And now what we want to do is look for common parts. Okay. Look for sides that are that are that they both share, angles they both share, and so forth. Okay. Well, in this diagram. The, really, the only common parts we have 
would be side W X. Okay, that's really the only common side we have because even though both of these have an angle W, the angle is different in both triangles. Okay, see angle W is congruent to angle X and angle W here is congruent to this angle X, but they're two different angles. They are not the same angle, so therefore we cannot use them as common parts. Okay, we can't use them as common parts because Obviously, this angle is a lot bigger than that one, so that's why we can't use them in common parts, okay? Now, this is where it might get complicated. It says, when several triangles overlap, and you need, and you need to use one pair of congruent triangles to prove another pair congruent, you may find it helpful to draw a diagram of each pair of triangles, okay? So let's look at number four, separating overlapping triangles. And we do have a proof here, I'm trying to get it all on the one page. So here we have a big triangle. It says CA, and again, I recommend to draw on these things. CA, so this whole side here is congruent. And CE is congruent, so this whole side is congruent. And then BA is congruent to DE. They want us to prove BX congruent to DX. All right. Well, the first thing we need to do here is we need to prove these two triangles congruent. All right? That's the first thing we need to do. So, number one, we started out with our two givens, that BA is congruent to DE and that CA is congruent to CE. That's our given. All right? Now, we know that this angle here, angle A, is congruent to angle E, okay? Because we, this is an isosceles triangle. That's what they told us here with our given statement. Okay, they told us that this was an isosceles triangle. So that's how we know that these two angles are congruent. Of course, we know AE is congruent to AE. That's the reflexive property of congruence. Right? And then, of course, this was in our given that this is congruent to this. So therefore, we just proved these two congruent by side, angle, side. All right. Now, <clears throat> now we know that angle ABE, all right, so this angle here is congruent to angle EDA, which is this angle here, okay, because now we're proving these two triangles congruent with the second half of this proof. Okay, you can kind of split this proof in half, oops, right here at number five. Okay, so now, even though this has the same number of arcs as this. They're two different triangles, so don't think that this angle is congruent to this one. All right. So we know that these two angles are congruent because now that we've proven these two triangles congruent, we know that these two angles have to be congruent. So in these two triangles, this angle B is the same as this angle B. Same thing with D. This D is the same as this angle D. So we know those are congruent by corresponding, basically, CPCTC. Okay, we know that both angles here at X are congruent because of their vertical angles, and vertical angles are always congruent. And we know that DE and BA is congruent because that's in our given statement. Okay, so now if you've looked, we've proven both of these triangles congruent by angle, angle, side. Okay, now that we've proven them congruent via angle, angle, side, we know that BX and DX are congruent, again, because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's, you can write this CPCTC instead of having to write out this long statement. Okay? So, as you can see, you may have to prove one set of triangles congruent before you can prove a second set of overlapping triangles congruent okay so when you're working when you're working on problems with overlapping triangles just keep it in your mind that you may have to prove more than just the two 
but you're trying to prove, you may have to prove more than just two triangles congruent. Like in this case, we proved two pairs or four triangles congruent. We proved these two congruent, and then we use that to prove these two congruent, okay? So just keep that in mind that you may have to do something like this, okay? All right, now back to that focus question that we had at the beginning. It says, how do you identify congruence and overlapping triangles? Well, the answer, to identify congruence and overlapping triangles, you must first be able to see the triangle parts clearly. Okay, so if you need to, separate them out and redraw them so that you can see the parts clearly. Then identify common sides and angles. Okay. Then, well, then this says redraw them separately, labeling any common sides or angles. All right. So congruence and overlapping triangles, again, you may have to prove a pair congruent to prove another pair congruent. All right, but keep in mind, usually the easiest way to do this is to separate them, redraw them, or you can trace each triangle in a different color and just see where the colors overlap. Okay, where the color, colors overlap, those are common parts. Okay, those are common parts. And feel free on any work that you want to do feel free to if you have highlighters highlight around it I mean you use your highlighters that, that'll be easy because then if you use because usually two, when you combine two highlighter colors you get this ugly color so after you trace around them just look for the ugly color and that'll be your common side and angle so make sure you don't use a dark colored highlighter because you may you know cover up the letters and you may not be able to read it anymore okay so now here's your ticket in the door Number one, identify common sides or angles for these two. Number two, I mean number three and four, separate and redraw the overlapping triangles and label the vertices. Number five, in exercise one, both triangles have vertices J and K. Are J and K common angles for triangle MKJ and triangle LJK? Explain. And that means common, that means they're shared in both. Number six, error analysis and diagram at triangle PSY is congruent to triangle SPL. Based on that fact, your friend claims that triangle PRL is not congruent to triangle SRY. Explain why your friend is wrong. And number seven, in the figure below, which pair of triangles could you prove congruent first in order to, to prove triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB? And of course, explain. So make sure you have this ready when you come to class tomorrow, and I will have the answers up on the board. So for you to check it, so go ahead and work on it, and check them tomorrow. See you tomorrow in class.